So today we are talking about language arts. That is what we are talking about today. But first up, of course, I have products of the day. So now we're gonna we're talking the best, the top, the favorite. I bought every language arts program there pretty much was. So I'm gonna show you in a bunch of them and you can decide which ones you like, which ones you don't like. Sometimes I'll tell you which ones I don't like or why we didn't use it or what we use instead. But other than that, there's some for autistic children. There's some for neurodiverse kids. There's some for ADHD. There's some for gifted children. It's whatever works for you. So you could take a look. First up, we have a very cool product. This is yoga dice. You roll them and then you choose a position. That's it. You roll them and you choose a position. So they are a great, I say they're a great transition. They're transition and because there's so many, if a child can't do one position, they can choose the other position to do. So we used it from, if you did like morning baskets, circle time, breakfast books, whatever, and you need to transition to sitting at the table, it was just a great transition because it was fun because okay, let's do our yoga dice. Let's get out the yoga dice and we used to roll them. Or if there's like kind of a meltdown or someone's having a tough time or for my ADHD kid, we'll pull these out like we did this morning and roll them a bit and have kind of a good time together. Let's talk about other products we have to show you. I have quite some exciting things to show you. Okay, so the first step is critical and creative thinking activity. This is by Evan Moore. This is essentially for the grade one um, area. Now, as you can see underneath there, you'll see another critical thinking company product. So this is Evan Moore. They're different companies. They're different companies. I'm just telling you that I bought a lot of creative thinking products and books, and this is one of them. It's okay. It's okay. You take a look at it and you decide. You decide. It's kind of cool. Whatever. So creative and critical thinking again by Evan Moore. We open it up. And these are some of the activities. How's an elephant the same as a rabbit? How is an elephant different from a rabbit? Elephants eat, live, and like to, what's wrong with this picture? Um, what is the, so sometimes what I would do is, if it were me, is maybe I would read through this and think, uh, let's try that. Circle the elephant that is different. Would it be fun having an elephant for a pet? Would it be hard to have an elephant for a pet? Or why would it be hard? Here, for example, they do this a few times in the book where it's lions. Um, so for example, they do, whereas lions, house cats, and then both, and then down here you choose which one roars, which one has a mane, da da da. So I'm torn between this is kind of a wasted time, but it, it's kind of, maybe the child might think it's a fun activity too. Look at the animals each row and then write why they belong together. These things I kind of think are cool because you, you know, you're using that part, like why do they belong together? And also can I get it? I would say this is cause horns because that little guy has horns up there, but they're hard to see. This I would say, I'm not sure. Why the heck are, oh, cause they have long necks, that's why. So I'd be curious to see if the child can do it um, <laughs> when I can't do it. So now at the beginning too, you'll notice that they have something for every holiday, all different holidays, Christmas, Hanukkah, Valentine's Day, Halloween. Finish the sentence differently. I love, I love, I love. Three hearts of the same color them. What is something that's usually pink? What is something that's always red? What is something that is always white? So, and then as you go through the book, here's another one. So at the store, circle the item that you think costs more, chocolate or milk, cornflakes or apple, da, 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 da. And what are your favorite foods? And then here, order these pictures. Put these pictures in order. And write two sentences about going grocery shopping. So kind of interesting. Oh, I love I love crosswords. <laughs> I wonder if I could do that one. I think I could because they're looks pretty easy. But anyway, so it's up to you if you like it or not. If you like it or not. The problem is too, I notice, is that there's so many of these books that I like. And so so I'd rather go through and just pull out some activities rather than do the whole book because there's so many it's just there's so much competing for the time that I have with my child, right? Because they're not gonna sit forever. This is the Critical Thinking Company. This is grades pre-K through two. This is one of the best ones. I bought them all. This is, I've showed you another one that I really love, but this is one of the better ones. It's one of the better ones because look at it. It's kind of cool. Vertebrates and invertebrates. Also, there's perforated pages, which is a plus. Is there perforated pages in here? I do not think so. Yeah, there are. Okay, so vertebrates and invertebrates. So vertebrates, the animal has, okay, so you learn about that and then it's like invertebrates and invertebrates, or vertebrates and invertebrates. And then you learn, so fill in the charts X for that and blank and that line for no as you go through. So it teaches you and then you get to go and learn about these things. So after we're done with invertebrates, we learn about cold and warm blooded animals. 
So kind of cool. This book, I have two of them and I want to do them. I was just reminded of them by pulling them out. And I was like, yes, that's why I kept it because I think it's, I want to use it. I think you learn and I think it uses critical thinking as well. So interesting animals in this lesson. And then the choice box to fill in these words. So these are kind of things that my child that is ADHD, I sit him on my lap and we do this page. Uh, maybe while he's eating, we can go through and has a snack, we can go through it. Or just, you know, just to make it low pressure so we're not sitting uncomfortably at a table. I also read too, one of, not read, um, when we lived in Germany, one of the OT there said, listen, one of the first things you have to do is make sure your child is in an appropriate seated chair where his feet are touching either the floor or something on something because otherwise his mind won't properly it, it won't focus as well it's whether that's true or not i have no idea but um i did think it was interesting because this particular child since he was a baby was always on the table he was always on his table so his feet were always on the table so there could be something to it because he still does it he'll still sit in a chair and sit on the arm of the chair with his feet on the chair if he doesn't have proper footwear. All right, one more product of the day. This is Dr. Bonified. I love, I love Dr. Bonified. So this is bones of the hand, arm, and shoulder. So there's four books. So they cover like bones of the skull, bone. So it's just dealing with Dr. Bones. It's dealing with bones. They are not the cheapest book, but who in the world am I? Ah, that is the great puzzle. Okay, so let's talk about things. It's got a little poem there. It has, I'll teach you about all 206 bones. Osteology is the study of bones and the skeletal system. So very interesting. More books that I want to go through. You ever have that where you have so many things you want to do with your kids and you're like, okay, you have to narrow it down. So what I do, a tip that I do is that I say, okay, for the next three weeks, like I'm going to, or next three to six weeks, I'm going to focus on this book. And just do this book every morning, we do it a bit before we do schoolwork, right? Or during schoolwork or wherever. And then after that, it would be like, okay, for the next six weeks, I'm gonna focus on this book. Okay, let's talk about, I wanna show you in, in a couple different reading, couple different language arts systems. Yesterday, last video, I'll attach it at the end. I showed you some language arts and then I pulled out a couple books that I wanted to go through. Now let's take a look at Abeka's. We're gonna start not in the kindergarten Abeka's, which is very overpriced. We're talking $1,000. And then if you buy the videos to help teach your child, that's an extra 500. So overpriced, I have it, I'll, I can show it to you. Overpriced, and I don't care for it. it. Whatever, it's just personal opinion. But let's talk about the grade one program for Becca for the language arts. I'm gonna show you some cool stuff that you can get, don't have to get, but anyway. Okay, so this is the language arts, the seat work book. The seat work book. So color E's green color, the lowercase is blue. I'm in first grade, I'm learning fast. I'll write a story and read it by myself before the year is passed. All right, so we're just going through some easy, kind of cool stuff. It's nice, it's bright colored, I like that. I don't know the price of this book. I don't, I don't think it comes with a teacher's manual, otherwise I, I would probably have it. But anyway, so it's, it's something to use. It's something to use, but you don't have to use it, so let me show you this other system here. Anyway, so just giving you a flip through. Now, you're starting, what's interesting about a Becca is that they do cursive or they do manuscript. In the homeschool, you can choose. Let me show you over here. In kindergarten, you can choose to do manuscript or you can choose to do cursive. I did manuscript. So this is what they start out with in the manuscript writing. Again, you can purchase uh, everything separately if you need to. And then this is writing with phonics. So kind of the next level up. After you did the first one, I believe. I believe, I'm not sure which is first. Okay, so back to grade one, that's kindergarten, back to grade one. So you can also get, you don't have to get that book, to enjoy these readers. Let me show you these readers. So this is the handbook for reading. I didn't really use it, but you, again, you can use it. So this is the reading program. So in first grade, these are like the learn to read ones. And then it goes second grade. So your kids are essentially learning to read and then they're gonna read by themselves, right? So they're reading these all themselves. The short vowels in kindergarten, they have these cards that are very helpful. They're very good cards. 
Um, and all it has is a letter on it and a picture so that you can learn um, the sounds. So going through here, you're learning sound, elephant, net. So I don't care for this system, but it's again, to each his own, to each his own. A lot of people don't mind and think it looks simple. To me, I find it a little complicated. Okay, so you see that, but you don't need that book in order to enjoy these. Take a look at these. See how they're like 1C and 1G? This is where they shine. So stepping stones is like the beginning. 1C are not is not that interesting. But look at here. See, this is stepping stones. So that's where you are. They're $20 a book. They're about one, uh, how many pages in here? I want to say 100 pages. They're each about 100 pages. These are the stories you're going to be talking about. All right. And so these are the character themes. This is where this program shines, is the character themes that they're discussing. So this is, again, your child's just learning to read. So it's not that interesting. You're just learning to read. It's not that interesting yet. And I usually, um, art, farm, like we read over these words and then um, read the story, right? So again, not that exciting. But listen, this is where it starts to get really interesting to me is about 1G. About 1G, you start getting into something really cool. The Strong and True book. This to me is wonderful. They also have Aesop's Fables, which is interesting. Now these all come with the teacher's manual. You don't need the teacher's manual. I bought the teacher's manual for Aesop's Fables just to see. And yeah, it does improve the situation, like make it even better, but it's not necessary at all. So this is the strong and true. So look at these stories here. Okay, so this is this, this the character themes, right? The guide to the stories. Through these stories, appreciation, aspirations, beauty, cheerfulness, these stories cover them. And now we're getting into some stories that are interesting. So I skipped this personally, words to practice, although I'll, I'll show you what it would do. Let me show you a story for an example as to how it goes. So this is the Raven and the Robin. The story about this is like the Raven's personality is sucky and he sees the negative and everything and the Robin's isn't. So words to watch for Raven, Robin, only simple maple warm and everyone. So then I read the story. Now, when he gets a bit older, he'll read it. I'm going to have him go through and read it. But there's questions at the end. Think about it. What kind of attitude did the Raven have? What kind of attitude did the Robin have? Which was wiser, the Raven or the Robin? And what made their attitudes different? Now we're talking about the melancholy pig. And then it's got words to practice. So I always choose, do we do this? So like a contraction is one word made from two words. So we use an apostrophe to show where the letters have been left out. I, I'll, I will, isn't, is not, stuff like that. And now remember that this is a Christian book. So God's care. Do you know me? So what I love is how they refer to God. So again, as you get further down into the stories, they get more interesting. And they, the boy who cried wolf, I mean... Be true. So they just have lots of important values and lessons in each story. And I just, I think they are fantastic. So let's talk about another language arts program. Let's talk about this one. I guess you would call it a secular program. Well, let's do this first. This is, I guess you would call it a secular program. I mean, it's neither. So it just doesn't talk about God. So we'll just call it secular. So this is the, I can read it. This is a very simple word program that I have used to teach uh, one of my children to read. Very simple. Don't buy it on Amazon, buy it on uh, reading Rain rainbow resources because it's, it's like 10 bucks a book there and on Amazon it's 40 for some reason. So this is essentially what you do. This is the pages here teaching you how to teach your child to read, but essentially you're like learning at bat, mat, pat. So you go over the words with your child, right? That's lesson one. You see where I'm saying? Lesson one. And then you open up lesson one. And at the bottom, it has the sight words you're doing. Is, at, and the. And then it's got the pat story. All right? And then you flip the page. And then you're learning that. You are adding that onto it. And then you go through and read that story. Now, I use a very similar system. I use the Diane Craft Word System for children who have difficulty learning to read. What it does though, is that for these words, these sight words, if you will, or extra words, I don't know what you call them, but whatever. These words down here, they have a pictorial that goes with these words. So a mnemonic device that helps the child if they have difficulty remembering it. But it's still the same concept. It's still the same. So then you go through the flashcards. So I would have him memorize the flashcards first and then read the story. Either way, works great. And that's 
this system. So this is book one. There's book one, two, three, and four. Okay, so net, a mat and hat, a flat hat. Net is bad. Still like the die and craft system better, but this for 10 bucks a book to teach your kids to read, and it did teach my child to read, not bad. Let's talk about our last program today. This is five in a row. They also have a before five in the row. This is five in a row. This is volume one, ages five to nine. This covers all of your, you can do this if you wanted to. Um, it, this is essentially, it covers like history, geography, social science. I mean, it covers everything. This is your book list. So they're very interesting books. Papa Piccolo about a cat. Um, the Night of the Moon Jellies. It's about a grandmother who owns a store. A pair of red clogs I haven't read yet. Madeline, of course. Lentil is a great story. So let's talk about Madeline. We'll go with Madeline just to show you how you do it. So you read this one book every day of the week. So the same book that week. Okay, so you're going to read. So let's go page 48. Is it sure 48? Madeline, yeah. This is your teacher's manual that you're using. So the child doesn't really need to see this. This is There's not really... It's more hands-on stuff. So geography, Madeline is set in Paris. Have your student locate France on a world map. All right, now you don't have to do all of these. You choose, essentially what they recommend you do is you choose one a day. Like social studies, so we'll choose poetry. The story text of Madeline is one long poem which utilizes rhyme and rhythm. Practice making up rhyming words with your student. So language arts, so you can choose which ones you want. This is the vocabulary that you're learning. And it's got even math, relative size and degree. So you are, so it does cover a variety of topics. So if you want a very child-centered, a very Charlotte Mason type approach, if you will, it's this. Now you can also choose based on age as to which activities you do, because perhaps you do a deep dive into architecture, uh, but the buildings showing the illustrations on Madeline are real street scenes of Paris. So find a book with photographs on Paris, or you can just search them on the internet, right? There you go, and uh, you can look at photographs, you can look at pictures, whatever, paintings. So it does art appreciation, which I think Montmartre is the area of, of Paris where they do a bunch of painting. Just, that's not in here, but you, you know, you could talk about that, for example. So math, beginning grouping and dividing skills. So it has math and symmetry, science, the human body. So Madeline provides an opportunity to mention a part of the human body and show your child its appearance and location in the children's anatomy book or online. Madeline points to her scar, and indeed the human appendix is located between the large and small intestine and the lower right abdomen. For a young child, just saying the name of the small body part and having her point to her own appendix is more than enough information for now, and that builds a platform for more facts later. There's also health as well, so... Okay, so... Now let's look on, I'll choose one more book so you can see what it's like. Let me choose a book that I've read from here just so that, let's do Katie in the Big Snow, I, I think Storm in the Night. All right, Night of the Moon Jellies, let's go 189. So this is ages five to nine, just to, so let's go 189. So these books are available at the library, It is, and you only need it out for a week, and it is an affordable, so it's an extremely affordable curriculum. Because, for example, if you're studying, like, um, the steam shovel, the, the steam shovel book, um, that one by Virginia Lee. Anyway, forget that. Okay, so Night of the Moon Jellies. This is Night of the Moon Jellies. So geography, studying New England, right? Introduction to running a small business. Social studies responsibility. Social studies life near the sea. Language arts, the contrast. So it's up to you if you consider this a full curriculum or not, and you go ahead and use it. But I think it's it's a fantastic idea that you read the book for five days because you learn something new every time you read it. Language arts, first person point of view, vocabulary, marina, pier, moon jellies. So it's a very gentle and easy curriculum because some people, that is their thing and that is what they like to do, especially if your child's young. Math learning about money. Night of the Moon Jellies provides a chance to introduce the topic of money. Social studies working in a restaurant. Name his own restaurant, create his own menu with prices. Five in a row, not very expensive if you don't buy the books with it, if you just get this. And depending on what you're studying, say you're studying train, say you're studying um, whatever it is, depending what's available in your local area, you could also do field trips on it. Because I have a couple, I have volume one, volume two, and the pre, pre five in a row as well, which is definitely an option. But anyway, there you go.
and uh, I we might have more language arts programs to talk about another time. What is your favorite language arts program? Let me know. Take care.